Learn to be super successful. Subscribe to my channel, me head. But the guys and the gals get into these cases. And when you're debating the cases, you know, a case, a Harvard case that's XYZ, uh, and we've got a group from the Netherlands and, and Europe, and we've got a group from, you know, the United States. Some of these debates get quite, uh, I mean, aggressive. I don't mean this kind of aggressive. Uh, but all the cases that they study in these B-schools, the results that come away aren't necessarily correct. And, of course, we have the benefit of hindsight. And we know that the AOL deal, Time Warner deal, was one of the worst deals that was ever done in the last 30 years. So we can poke the guys that did the deal in the eye. But what you, when, the benefit of all these cases, the, the driving force that will become almost instantly obvious to you after five or 10 cases is they were all fee driven. For the very reason they don't sell or promote QLA because there's virtually no fees, all these cases, the Nabisco deal, which is one of the worst deals that ever lived, when it went from $7 billion to $11 billion, and two of that extra $4 billion were fees. And when it went from $11 billion to $14 billion, everybody on the planet that had a half a brain realized the only reason the fucking deal got done because they were on success fees, and if the deal wasn't completed, nobody would get paid. But the average schmuck that owned Nabisco stock didn't know that. I knew it. And that's why Sally contends nobody will ever sell, in my lifetime, because I'm old, sell QLA because there's no fees in it. Where you can advise somebody and get 25 million in fees, and you advise somebody and you're gonna get $300,000 with a QLA deal, what are you gonna advise? Partially, but e e uh, Elon, because he's got so much money, he can drive the markets. He can drive the markets. But legitimately, Elon knows and has more or less proven that the uh, uh, duplicate uh, ac accounts in Twitter are much greater than Twitter says. Uh, you know, and so uh, how they ascertain a real number, I don't know. But I do know if Twitter sells to Elon, Donald Trump is our next president. That I will fucking guarantee. And if that happens, when that happens, we should praise God, Allah, or whoever, because we're going to all get fucking bloody rich. I mean, on steroids. Now, do I believe that Putin wouldn't be invading um, Ukraine if Trump was president? Yeah. Pardon? Okay, now, uh, Taiwan is a different deal. Even though Biden said that we would defend Taiwan, uh, I don't believe that. He, well, he, I don't know what he's smoking. Yeah, and uh, of course, his military, Secretary of uh, Defense, et cetera, backed it up immediately. Uh, Sally and I were on a yacht uh, a year ago with some very uh, close confidants of Biden. Uh, and he says Biden has two emotional traumas in his bank account. One, he's losing his memory. And two, the plug's in his head because he's bald, but... And the plugs, if, if you uh, know anything about plugs, aren't that high-priced plugs. Mm -hmm. The plugs that you, know, you pulled out of your front lawn, you know. Uh, well, no, no, you're not going to get my phone out. <laughs> I've had my kids, as, as, as Kat would know, my kids have to make an appointment to talk to me, and they have to have an agenda.
Yes, sir. Oh, this is just about the Taiwan comment. Because uh, <laughs> I'm from Taiwan. Um, no, no, but uh, leading up to the whole, whole war and stuff, uh, my dad told me, if China does invade Taiwan, we're going back, I'm going back, and we're going to go kill some Chinese. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think, well, I hope China never invades Taiwan. Okay. Um, other questions? I'm ready to go to sleep early. I mean, I'm surprised uh, Sally's not there with her cattle prod jolting me. What else? Let's talk about uh, alcohol. I used to roll it up. Oh, fuck yes. Uh, yes, it's uh, in, in, in the Highlands. Um, I can't, I don't remember the name. Sally and I took a yacht a couple years ago that just went to the distilleries. And I mean, I won't say they all taste the same, but when you go to the two distilleries a day, I mean, I was looking forward to getting back to the boat so I could take a nap. Uh, but I mean, um, a lot of them are still family owned. I would go after the family owned first. Uh, a lot of them have uh, almost gone bust at least once in their long careers. A lot of them are looking for leadership uh, because now the owners, the kids of the original owners, or the grandkids of the original owners are old. The same uh, demographics that we described and they don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, and the, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's certainly a, a potential roll-up, absolutely. Uh, yes, sir. So I know that there's no, like, uh, follow-up, but, like, if we get to the point where we're closing deals, can we reach out to you? Or we... No. Oh, no. Unless, unless you get in trouble. Trouble defined by me, not defined by you. So your, your chairman walks out, your CFO walks out, to steal your deal. I'm sure, being the nice black boy that you are, that won't happen to you. Okay? Depending on how many of your other ethnicities that you bring on to your, uh, your board. Now, if somebody is, uh, you know, raping you, I'm interested because I like to, I don't mean physically, <laughs> I, I don't mean physically raping you, but I, you know, I, I you know, like, uh, uh, Superman, I like to come in and fix things. But all the things that uh, were going to happen to you, I've taught you how to be around, to avoid. And yet you'll, you know, you can't help yourself and you'll step on your dick. Uh, but I mean, people sealing your deals is an emergency to me because that's easily avoided. Uh, it depends, and it depends how convincing you are to Kim when when you're crying, and Cat gets these emails, you know. Now Cat's toughened up over the last several years. She felt more empathy for you five years ago than she does now. Now that she's seen three or four hundred cases about the stupidity that you, that's part of your uh, nature. Uh, I believe, I'm happy to say that she's not uh, as sympathetic. But what you consider a world crisis and what I consider a world crisis, most of the times you call me, it's already too late. The, the, the horse is already out of the barn. I can't resurrect when rigor mortis is set in. When the baby's already stiff, I can't resurrect that. So normally you call me too late because you're embarrassed. First of all, you inform the board too late, and then you inform me too late, and the baby's already dead. 
floating, you know, stiff in, in the water. But if you use your boards like I tell you to, and you enlist their assistance, you, have, you don't have these problems. You heard uh, Thomas, amongst others, say, you got to use your board. But at the end of the day, you still don't want them to think you're, you're an idiot. They know you're not sophisticated. They know these deals take longer than you think they're going to take. And if you have a candid discourse with them, which unfortunately most of you kids don't, they know that the sooner you give them the bad information, this, and, and, and one of the things I only glossed over, although a couple of the kids uh, uh, pinpointed, you've got to keep these guys in the loop every two weeks. Thomas uh, the Zealot has a video he sends out every two weeks. Most of the other kids just send an email update. They've got to be informed where you are. And they, unlike you, that have been through hundreds of transactions, realize everything's not rosy. Shit happens. And they will understand the, the speed bumps that turn into Mount Everest better than you. But they don't understand it if you don't tell them. Because everything isn't 100% rosy. Believe me. It's not. And um, you've got you to, you know, there's never a good time to, t to make a hard decision. And these guys, with their 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, 100, 300 years experience cumulatively, understand that better than you. But it's hard when you're, uh, uh, you're talking to Dr. So-and-so, the chairman, uh, and you're stuttering, uh, well, what is it? Well, it appears the deal's gone sideways. And then you fill them in and they say, fuck, why don't you call me earlier? That's almost always the first words out of their mouth. Ricky, why did you, I mean, fuck. The fucking the dog's out of the doghouse or the, uh, what do you call it, the, the uh, horse is out of the barn. He's already run from Chicago to Cleveland. I mean, fuck, what are you calling me now for? They know that and they understand that and they appreciate that better than you. And when you have a more or less world-class chairman, they will expect you to go to him or her first. But fuck, uh, he's going to think I'm an idiot. Yes, but he already knows you're not too bright. So, so call him. So you want to depend on your chairman and prime minister? Oh, he is your crutch. He is your, you know, prosthesis for the leg you don't have. He is your Zimmer frame, you know, that fucking thing you push in front of you. He is, or she is, the guy or the gal. And if you choose right, and again, the pressure is back on you. If you choose right, oh, they love it. I've got, you know, a few guys and gals that have, you know, not like a second father because that, that, that implicit uh, with too much bullshit. But I mean, I love you're the kid they never had. And, uh, but don't ride these old fuckers too hard. Because not looking at the downside, some of these times these old fuckers die in the saddle. You know, uh, this is one of them, but guys my age are normally tired. So you have to, you know, and when you ask them, is there anything that could preclude us doing a deal? Remember that? But I also ask, with the greatest respect, I don't mean this in the wrong way. Please don't take it the wrong way. But how's your health? And nobody asks that anymore. In fact, there's human resource laws that say you can't ask those questions, but you got to ask. And so you can put all the bullshit you want in front of it. I don't, I don't mean it that way, and you look, healthy, you look healthy, but is there anything, you know? And I'll tell you straight up, well, 
I had a heart attack last year or I had this or I had that. Just because he had a heart attack last year doesn't mean you preclude him. Yes, sir. I'm not sure if Ukraine decides to uh, allow Russia to annex part of uh, uh, Ukraine, which could happen the rest of this year. Yeah, I mean, it, but the negotiations of them giving up a fifth of the country could take you know a year or two to negotiate. So that's not ending anytime soon. Pardon? Three, four years. Uh, well, three or four years, and uh, that's that's terrific for us. Yes, sir. No, do you think Russia is going to bomb us? Yeah. No. And even if they bomb the UK, they're never going to bomb Scotland. <laughs> I mean, Mayfair, you, they're going to wipe you out. Not, not up here. I moved here for a reason. One, the estate, if you, there's not any, maybe major, this is easily, easily defendable, this estate. A lot of wide open spaces, crossfire, et cetera, killing zones, okay. Number two, the, uh, there's nothing up here, okay. So if they're gonna, although during, when they used to bomb London, on their way home to Germany, they used to unload whatever bombs they didn't spend here in Scotland. Uh, we had uh, staff here 30 years ago that used to, when the bombers, the Luftwaffe would unload their bombs, the kids used to ch run in front of the bombs as they're going to the bomb shelters. That was their sport, that was the game. And we had people working here uh, 30, 35 years ago that remembered Outrunning the Luftwaffe bombs, okay? That's not likely to happen again. Uh, the, uh, they're gonna, they will bomb London, Manchester, Liverpool, etc. I'm assuming that you don't think you'll ever live back in, in the States? No, that's not necessarily true. You know, Sally and I were talking about having a penthouse in New York again. Uh, but it's not likely. But now, I mean, information instantaneous. The uh, even in Chicago, one of the places I we have a daughter there. It's not like I will ever move to Detroit. I can almost guarantee that a thousand percent. The likelihood of us going to Detroit is zero. Yeah. Chicago? Well, Chicago. Our daughter's there, so I'm not going to say that a hundred percent. Okay, but. Uh, well, well, don't don't blow too much smoke up Ricky's ass. But anyway, um, but I, you know, uh, the uh, I w I would rather uh, Kelly lived in uh, Atlanta as opposed to Chicago. But she she lives in Chicago. 